In another character file, I'm going to repeat that process. I will set the pivot point for the body. I will set the pivot point for the head. I want the head to be able to kind of rotate based on where the neck, kind of neck if we can call it that is. I'll put a pivot point for the mouth. Now let's go turn on the front view. So we'll move that pivot point over for this mouth and we'll go to the head and put that pivot point there. And repeating once again, I'm going to, um, all right, got lazy. Add a peg, click, add a peg, click, okay. Now this time, this will be my slug master peg. And this will be slug profile peg. And this one will be my slug slug front peg. All right, so now let's go to the two front layers, drag those onto the front, drag the two profile layers onto the profile, and drag the body down so it's behind the head, and then drag all three groups onto the master, click on the master, and I want to set the pivot point for the master right here. One more control point that we will want to put on here as a peg, so we have the two uh, heads, but what we will want is one more peg that we will use, and this peg will be to move both heads as a group. So this will be slug, head, peg. And that goes into the master peg, and then the two heads will be part of that. Now I'm going to modify the pivot point for that so that it's kind of at the base of where I want it to be able to move. And the reason we're doing this is then when we are animating, we can animate this one peg for both heads so that as we're moving our character through the scene, as we swap between front head or profile head, they're going to be in the same location. So that's going to be beneficial to us. So with my character all set with all of the mouths, they've all been named, all my pivot points have been configured. I want to add this to my templates folder so I can add it into a new scene. Now, as I open this file, this is not unlocked. Every time we open it, all of our libraries or folders we have access to in the library will be by default locked. The symbols, symbols are things that are going to be only part of this project, so they get put into the project folder of the open file, but they're not allowed or accessible to other projects when we have those open. So symbols aren't a great way to share things between files. They're a way to save something that you could reuse multiple times within your current project, but you can't then reuse it in a different project. So to be able to reuse this now into a new scene, I need to make a template. So I first have to right click on it and choose Write to Modify. So once I add a folder to my list of libraries here, on my computer it will stay. In any new project I open, I will see any libraries that I've added. If you're working on a computer that is frozen, you'll have to re-add that library or open that library each time and then choose Write to Modify. Once you choose Write to Modify, you take that master peg layer, you drag that over, it asks you what do you want to name it, you can just leave it as is, or you could rename it however you want, click OK. So now those two templates have been added to this folder on my computer. Looking inside that folder, which is on my desktop, I see I now have these two files, TPL, so these are template files. So when I make a new scene in Harmony, I can simply drag from this library here, 
these templates into my timeline and then I will have access to these characters in a new scene. To use the character templates that we have created, all we have to do is go to that library folder which should be available inside my library window and I will see there are those template files. So if I want to bring one in, I can just simply drag it out and it brings it into the project. We see it's there along with all of its layers and frames. If I go to the mouth, we'll see the mouth has all of its artwork as well. So that's pretty awesome. Now if I want to bring in my other character, I can do that, positioning that on screen as well. So I'm going to simply relocate my character to a new position. So notice if I click on it here, it if I click on a layer, now all of that character and its control peg has been selected. But if I click on a layer, individual layers, we notice it takes on this kind of purple overlay. That tells me I am selecting a drawing layer. So when it gives it that purplish, pinkish overlay color, that's a drawing layer. But if I click on it with a tool for selecting pegs, and we do have an option where we can say I want to select pegs when I click on things. So now this selected the head peg. There is no body peg to select. Click off. If I click here, that now chooses all of it. So that chooses the whole of that character. If I click on this frame here, I'll see it takes the yellow overlay. The red mixed with the yellow becomes orange. And that allows me to see that. So now if we zoom out, we can see I have this character here. I want to scale this character down a little bit. I'm going to hold down, whoa, no, uh, let's undo that. And let's try again on the slug here. We do have the scale tool that we can select for the slug and that allows me to scale it down. I'm going to hold shift to keep it proportional. So I'm going to scale the character down to about this size there. And now I'm going to select this character, scale this one down a little bit too. Oh. Trying to get some of my heads are about the same size. I can now grab my translate tool. I can start with that character there. Click here. Let's move. I want to start with this character right here for my scene. So that now gives me a good start. So this way I can bring my characters in from my templates that exist in my library and I can start animating them or doing whatever else that I want to do. And then we will also look at how we can bring in the audio so that the characters can start speaking with each other and how we're able to switch between the front and profile heads and how we can adjust the starting point of that audio so it will begin at a point in time after we've done the initial movement of the characters entering the scene.